Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us. This evening, we're privileged to have with us Dr. Nicholas Copa from Oregon Health University Sciences, Department of Neurosurgery. Uh, he's a neurosurgeon with specialty of endoscopic surgery. We're very excited to hear his thoughts tonight on endoscopic craniofacial procedures. Nick, thank you again, and we're very uh, much looking forward to your talk. Uh, Dr. Cohen, thank you very much for the opportunity to participate in the WNS Operative Grand Rounds. Uh, I've watched e each episode with enthusiasm, and it's a pleasure to be here this thank evening. You. I'm going to talk about endoscopic craniofacial resection, um, and my objectives for this discussion is to really establish the relevance of using this technique when performing craniofacial resection. We'll review uh, a basic understanding of the relevant anatomy of the anterior skull base as visualized during this procedure, and then lastly, demonstrate our technique of craniofacial resection with an emphasis on feasibility, adaptability, and reproducibility. This is our team, one neurosurgeon uh, and three ENT surgeons. It's extremely important to work uh, with an excellent team of uh, ENT surgeons. This is a reference from the 1960s, just to provide a historical perspective. Um, this is markedly uh, different from what I'm proposing this evening uh, as far as a technique to treat pathology within this region. Um, the indications for cranial facial resection uh, to treat malignant neoplasms involving the cribriform plate, uh, lesions such as esthesial neuroblastoma, carcinomas of the paranasal sinus, including lesions that either uh, approach but not invade the skull base or dura, or those that um, have dural transgression and may in fact involve uh, the brain to some degree. Um, surgical considerations when applying the technique include achieving an adequate oncological resection, uh, minimal brain retraction, avoidance of injury to critical neurovascular structures, adequate reconstruction of the anterior skull base uh, is on the forefront, uh, particularly with most recent advances. And then lastly, uh, the patients are concerned with optimal cosmetic outcomes, uh, and uh, we need to take that into consideration as surgeons. Traditional cranial facial resection can be considered a fairly morbid procedure. Um, morbidity usually centers around uh, frontal lobe injury, uh, which includes brain confusions, frontal lobe edema. That can clinically manifest itself as mental status change. Cerebral spinal fluid leakage and pneumocephalus, meningitis, local soft tissue infections, which can result in osteomyelitis of the bone flap, delayed mucosal formation, or even cranial nerve deficit. So these are the morbidities uh, that have been associated with the traditional technique, and we have to apply newer techniques uh, in light of those. So what is our experience? We started incorporating these techniques into our practice in 2010. Um, we have an N of 60, and you can see uh, in this exploded pie chart that 27% of our cases include sinonasal cancer and anesthesial neuroblastoma. The approaches to the ventral midline skull base have been broken down into transcribriform, transplanum, transphenoidal, transclival. In that categorization, 28% of what we've done uh, has been transcribriform, so cranial facial resection. Uh, and I attribute that largely to uh, the strength of our ENT department and uh, the referrals that we get from them. So what are the advantages of doing it endoscopically? Provides a direct route to the lesion of the sinus cavity. Um, the endoscopes particularly the angled endoscopes provide a wider field of view. There's minimal brain retraction, minimal manipulation, uh, and hopefully, as a result, minimal neurological morbidity. There's reduced risk of cranial bone flap osteomyelitis uh, because there's no craniotomy that's performed. So there's no free bone graft that's replaced at the conclusion of the operation. Whenever you incorporate a new technique into practice, you have to evaluate your results and look at things in the context of operative time, extent of resection, uh, incidence of CSF leak and other morbidities, uh, hospital length, 